So this is the Yamaha MU50 tone generator and this is basically a little box that produces general MIDI and it also had Yamaha's um, XG extended general MIDI thing that allowed it to provide more stuff than general MIDI could do. Uh, and this is a box from about the mid 90s I think and I have owned this since the mid 90s and my plan was to get this out and hook it up to the Amiga via MIDI interface and get this working. It's got MIDI ports on the back here. So that was the plan. However, take this out of storage and it worked for about one second and then it went off. So I'll demonstrate that. So I'm just going to power this with a 12 volt supply. It doesn't actually say on the back what to power it with, but I've had a look at the schematics and it does, it's got a five volt and a nine volt regulator in there. So I'm just going to power this off 12 volts. And here we go. Let's just have a look. I think you press uh, this one here and that is just the screen is lit but it's completely blank and that's what it's doing before it worked for about one second and then failed so we're going to take this apart and have a look to see if we can find out what's going on in here if I can resurrect this thing interestingly I've still got the manual and the sound list there so I've kept these since I bought it and it does have a little description in here um, I can just show you what the display yeah the display is supposed to look like that except green you're supposed to get stuff like that on the screen. So the MU50 is a compact, highly portable and easy to use tone generator. It features full general MIDI level one compatibility with 128 general MIDI voices and one drum kit. Also provides uh, the new XG MIDI compatibility with a total of 480 voices and 11 drum kits. Has 13 note polyphony and 16 part multi timbral. And there's the kind of things you might use it for. So with a home studio setup. If you have a MIDI keyboard and computer sequencing software, carry it with you with a laptop and then, you know, plug it in. You've got general MIDI capability. So I'd like to be able to get this going and then plug it in to the Amiga and get some stuff going on the Amiga. And there's all the kind of connections that you can make for it. It has an, a PC Mac connection. It's possible that you could get the Amiga working with one of these connections as well, but we've got MIDI for the Amiga, so we can do that. Right, so let's get this thing open. And I have had a peek in this before because I wanted to try and find out what was going on. So I have opened this up recently and had a look and I do know that it is not producing the correct voltage on the five volt line, but I don't know why it's not producing the correct voltage. I also do have, oh, that screw is getting rounded off of it. Do, so, do also have a good idea how to take this apart now. You need to take these two out here and these two out at the bottom. These two you don't need to take out here, they're just I think they might be for a different module that maybe had another thing in there, but they don't hold anything in there. Just two screws that don't, two bolts that don't hold anything in underneath. I've got to take these out as well. There we go. And now I've already forgotten what to do. This is going to slide out, I think. Oh, there we go. Take that off. Aha. Oh, there we go. So that bottom panel comes off. So those two screws there, or two bolts, are probably to hold something in that I haven't got in this module. Maybe there was a more expensive version of this that had something else in it. I do have a schematic for this, and it's handily uh, a little section of the input stage here. And it's got actually got a little you know, diagram of what 5-volt regulator they used and what 9-volt regulator they used. But yeah, power's coming in here and it's going to these two regulators. So this way, it doesn't really tell you what to use, but I've just used 12 volts because these two regulators should be able to accept 12 volts quite easily. Yeah, so power's coming in here and we've got, I think these are the two regulators. It says they are, the 5 volt one is IC15. That's IC15 and that's IC14. It is just written underneath the legs, underneath this heat sink at the back. Yeah, so this one is the 5 volt regulator. This one's the 9 volt regulator. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just check for a short on the output. And there's no short on the output of that one. And there's no short on the output of that one. I'll just check check for shorts on the input. Nope. Just checking between the middle pin and the inputs and outputs. So I haven't got any shorts on those. I can't really spot any leaking capacitors or anything. I do suspect capacitors because these are old. I don't see anything leaking. Doesn't look anything bad. There's a battery over there. Don't know how much of a problem that's causing. But maybe the next thing is to just start it up and just measure the output on this 5 volt regulator again. It may be just that this 5 volt regulator 
has gone bad. That's a possibility. But that would be the first thing to try, I suspect. In fact, let me just measure resistance first as well. Let's just measure that resistance on the output of this. So 1.6 kilo ohms and the output on this one. That's just 15 mega ohms. It's going down. Or oh, is there a capacitor involved in this? Well, it's not a short anyway. So it doesn't look like there's a short on the output, but that's definitely producing the wrong voltage. So let me, let me start it up and let's measure it. Right, it is now on and the screen is blank. So let's just measure the input to this five volt regulator. I've got the probes the wrong way around, but it's, uh, it's about 12 volts, 11.7, that's fine. And the output on this, yeah, it's 0.7 volts. So that's not good. What about the nine volt one? Yeah, that's the input, that's got a good input. And it's got about nine volts. So the nine volt regulator is working and this five volt regulator is not producing the correct output. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there's something bad about that because something else could be dragging it down. But at the moment, I do suspect that. I don't know if the first place to start might be to take out this five volt regulator and just put in a new one. So it could be worth checking. I've got a diode here as well. Ah, I could maybe find that diode and check that. D1F60, D8. I don't see where this diode is. Maybe they didn't install it? Where would it be? It's gonna be around here somewhere. Let's get this board out. Let's get this sucker out. Oh, look at these metal standoffs. That's really well built. Look at those. Proper metal case with metal standoffs in it. It's very good. And it's actually bolted to the top. It's kind of like upside down when it's in there. So I could have just left all this connected really. It's going to make it a bit hard to keep turning it over with this screen connected, but I can't seem to, I don't know how to do the, undo these clips. I don't want to break them because I'll never get another one. Let's just, oh, maybe the diodes are on the bottom. I didn't think of that. Oh, they are, the diodes are on the bottom. That makes sense. There's D8. I mean, it can't be short, can it? Because I'd get a short from the input to the output. I didn't check that though. 55 mega ohms, yeah. 1.6 volts on the diode. Okay, so I think that diode's good. I don't see anything like blown up or anything like that. Okay, so I'm just figuring out how to get these clips out. I don't want to snap anything, so I don't want to be too forceful, but it looks like there's a clip there. These are just stuck in, these are like pins. So I'll just write a one on there. Wow, there's no way of knowing which way around they're gonna go back in. So I'm just putting marks on them so I know which way they go back in. They're just pins that are pushed in. There we go. Okay, that's part of it. That's probably the power or something, is it? Oh, I don't know. Right, I've got that one too. Right, I've disconnected the front module, finally. Yeah, the power button is on the module at the top, so now I can't turn it on. Suppose I can connect this to turn it on. I'm just gonna try it with this front panel disconnected. Okay, there you go, we're on now. So I can tell that it's on, and we've still got that 0.7 volts. Right, so the suspect is still this voltage regulator then. So I think that's the first thing to do is to take that out. I don't know, am I doing this wrong? I'm a noob, so this is what I'm gonna do. Oh, that is locked in there. It's got Loctite on it maybe. There is no heatsink compound on this or anything, so they just connected it straight through. Okay, so I'm gonna desolder the five volt regulator. It might be that there's nothing wrong with this, but maybe it's not getting up to voltage because nothing's trying to suck power from it or something. I don't know if that's a thing. Let's see if we get any further, because I don't think there's any point checking the CPU or anything like that, because none of it's gonna run. Let's put a spot of flux on that, maybe that'll help. Oh, that did help the flux, wow. Don't normally do that. Wow, that flux is really helping. 
Oh, it's already fallen out. That's good. These are 5 volt, 1 amp linear regulators. A fresh. I mean, maybe it got damaged by plugging the wrong power supply in or something like that. That's a possibility. So I'm going to put some, seeing as this is probably in here to stay, I think I've got some heatsink compound. I've got a little bit of leftover CPU heatsink compound. So I'll just put a little dab of that on the back. Just a teeny dab of heatsink compound. It's like a spoonful of sugar. All right. Now I need a different soldering iron. Whoops. <laughs> I have turned <laughs> I turned off my power supply. That was not a good idea. Here we go. Where are we? <laughs> turned off my power supply like a noob. Oh, that's better. Right, let's not do that again. Let's try to turn on the soldering iron and instead turn off the lights. It was a pretty bad idea. Pretty bad. This is what I wanted to do. Yeah, turn on the soldering iron, not turn off the lights. Idiot. I've never put flux on before when I was doing desoldering. That really helped. I was, you know, I always put it on when I'm soldering, but when I when I'm desoldering, I don't do it. But that's been a real game changer. That that came off really well. I think it's already on. So I'm getting nothing, nothing. Are you kidding me? Is it not on? Getting nothing now. Oh no, what? 0.8 volts? I don't think I was making connection. Let's try that again. Okay, there's my 12 volts coming in. Right, got 12 volts, it's on. Are we getting anything out? Five volts, way! That is a good start. I'm getting five volts out of my regulator, so maybe this regulator is bad. Maybe it blew up by one. I don't know what power supply I've been plugging into this. Maybe I blew it up. There is another thing. This battery is probably definitely gone. I know there's this jumper here that can just disconnect the battery. I'm wondering if I should just pull this out. It's on the schematic actually of like that just disconnects the battery. So I might just leave, maybe I'll leave the battery off for now. Cause that, I'm not sure that that battery can't be working after 30 years. I don't know, maybe it is. The coin cells go for that long? Surely they don't. And it looks like it's soldered in. So replacing that could be a bit annoying. I think it just saves the settings anyway. So. So I wonder what caused the five volt regulator to go bad, but whatever's, whatever's happened, it's good now for a while. Might be a bad power supply that I used. Here we go. I'll turn some of these lights off so maybe you can see it light up. Um, where's the power? I think it's just gonna come on, I think it's on. Okay, look, it's on. It's back. Welcome to MU50. It's upside down, low battery. Oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting then. So <laughs> it didn't actually say that before when I tried it before. So if I turn this off and I'll put this jumper back on, <laughs> maybe that battery's working after like 30 years. That's unbelievable. Welcome to MU50, we're back. We had a blown regulator. Oh, the battery must be good. <laughs> it thinks the voltage on the battery is good. So we probably need to give it a bit of a soak test, but that thing is back on. I'm quite happy with that. Well, that was too easy. It's funny as well, because when I ordered the uh, five volt regulators, I bought a load of capacitors as well, thinking, ah, there's so many electrolytics in here, they're all gonna have failed, and they haven't. They just had a blown regulator. It's back. Right, let me do a bit of a reassemble on this, uh, and then we'll put it through its paces and see if we can get any sound out of it. Okay, I've got a pair of speakers plugged in. Let's see what we can do. It's powering up. Welcome to MU50. Uh, there we go, that's what it's supposed to do. That is what it was supposed to do. Now, if I remember rightly, it does have a demo built in and we should just be able to play that, see if it works. I mean, it's not turned off yet. When I had it booted up before, it, it was done for about a minute or so and then it, it went off. I think maybe, I'm using a different power supply, so maybe the power supply I was using was bad, I'll have to check it, but I'm using a different one here. Um, demo, here we go. Let's go to the demo. 
Demo, press enter. I don't hear anything. Oh, here we go. So that's actually pretty good. They're, they're trying to, with this demo, show off all the extended general MIDI things that they've put in. So it, it's not got the worst sound in the world. This is remember this is 1995 technology. This is this is not bad. I mean, this is probably like a really good example of a song you could do with it. But it looks like it's working. It's back. It just had a blown five volt regulator. So the plan for this now is in the next few videos, I have got uh, a MIDI interface for the Amiga that I want to get hooked up and see if that works. And then I'm going to try and hook this thing up to it and see if we can get this to play some music from the Amiga. It's just looping the demo now. So just for the end of this video, I'll I'll actually patch this straight into, um, I'll patch this straight into the audio and we'll get a proper recording of this and you get to hear how this sounds. <laughs> 